Welcome. Hi, folks. How are you? Good to see you. I hope you've been enjoying the little insight today into our program and the various things that we have going on uh, in the classroom, uh, in discussions, in invited guests, uh, thought leadership, uh, addressing the you know, global challenges for cities and urban living. So welcome. All right, we, I think we have a good group to start with. Uh, I'm going to bring up uh, a screen that will just give us some, uh, you know, ideas uh, in order to move this along quite well uh, with some notes for you. Okay. So welcome to our open house. Um, our real estate program is uh, is a unique program. It, it definitely, there are many like it, many uh, others that do that address real estate learning in different ways. Uh, but we really believe that we have uh, put together the best graduate program, uh, the best program for really learning about the real estate uh, ecosystem as it is uh, broadly, and of of developing your place or working towards your place within that ecosystem as you go through your learning with us. It's a, it's a rigorous and interdisciplinary curriculum. It is rigorous. We have only three semesters uh, in one calendar year. There's a lot to learn and uh, you, know, you get down to it very, very, very quickly. Interdisciplinary because real estate is interdisciplinary. Real estate brings in, as I say, all of these people in the ecosystem designers, uh, urban planners, financiers, brokers, uh, cities, cities and so on. Uh, and of course, users and community. Uh, it's, uh, we, we do a deeper dive than an MBA. Some people, many people considering our program might be choosing to do an MBA. An MBA will give you a, a broad knowledge of uh, business and general business principles and business practices. Uh, I myself did my MBA at Harvard, but what I, if you are really focused on real estate, this one narrows that or, or focuses that to be uh, relevant to real estate, the real estate activity itself. Uh, so a lot more real estate, a lot more depth than you would get from even a real estate concentration in an MBA program. Our faculty are fabulous. We have five full-time faculty and we have about 50 adjuncts. Uh, the adjuncts are drawn from industry. We're so fortunate to be in New York where we have people at the cutting, cutting edge of uh, all aspects of real estate, finance, architecture, uh, sustainability and so on. These are the adjunct faculty that come in and from whom you will learn and with whom you will uh, be able to address issues. Uh, New York City, of course, uh, provides the opportunity also to be able to go and see buildings, go and view properties, go and see, uh, see developments and so on. But, of course, many of you come from other places and those who come from America also want to go to other places. The world is increasingly global, so we do include a global outlook uh, and various courses, programs and travel uh, travel plans that enable you to have uh, a more global perspective as well. We are introducing a lot of technology. Uh, real estate was a laggard in picking up on technology uh, to support its activities, but now it is ramping up uh, very speedily. And we have, uh, we can have, you have dedicated classes, plus you have generalist classes on the application of technology. Uh, with our program being about 150 students a year, we have, and we've been going for over 30 years now, we have a, an alumni network that's over 3,000 people globally, uh, and of course many industry con contacts that have inter interacted with our program or hired our graduates or somehow connected with us or come and teach, and so the network uh, is, is extensive for, for our real estate program. And real estate is one of those activities, uh, one of those professions, one of those businesses where networking is absolutely key. It's not something one does alone. 
It's not something that one competes with one other person for. It really takes a whole lot of connections to various people. Um, our location is our strength. Obviously, we, we're within the School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation. That is a, a milieu of uh, concern for the built environment. If you just heard Michael Kimmelman's lecture, uh, the way in which the built environment uh, both constrains people or gives people potential or how people actually can work and take uh, control or take agency of their built environment is key. And being within the School of Architecture and Planning, we are constantly a part of those discussions. Uh, finance, of course, is at the core of real estate. And this is where the real estate program differs from the other programs within the architecture and planning school. Finance is, you know, at the heart of what it's about. Uh, and of course, New York City is one of the most progressive places in the world uh, about finance. And so you're constantly learning what's happening, what's the latest thing, what's the new SPAC, uh, and so on. Uh, so definitely we've got finance, physical development, you get to see all array of opportunities and, and experiments uh, with physical development uh, throughout New York City and its, its areas. Um, you will see development as a creative activity, you will be inspired by the things that people have, the solutions people have come up with and so on. Uh, within Columbia, uh, within the Columbia University, of course, we have a business school, we have a school of international and public affairs. We have a data sciences and computing sciences, and you're able to connect with these various schools and learn from these uh, disciplines through those connections. We really focus on um, being uh, leaders, uh, not just sort of parochially in New York, but globally. Uh, the, the issues, as you heard with Michael Kimmelman, uh, that we're concerned with are not just local uh, or, or very sort of siloed issues, but issues that are, are really affecting the world. Uh, sustainability is a big one that's coming in, uh, communities, displacement, uh, amenities, uh, equity, uh, and also the stabilization of the financial system so that uh, developers can avoid uh, booms and busts. Uh, the, all of those things are national and global issues today. Uh, as I say, to do this, we engage our alumni globally. There are many people in all parts of the world and uh, we either go and meet with them or they come here uh, and, uh, and meet with us and tell us about how they're reading things from that, uh, from that perspective. Uh, of course, we're uh, really focused on this sustainable global growth because we're the ones, we are real estate people, we're the ones that deliver this built environment. So understanding the whole dynamic of how that growth is occurring, who has, who is doing what and who, whose concerns are important and so on, and how we respond as professionals is key to what we're about. Now, the thing about real estate is that it's not just um, about a singular activity. It has many, many possibilities. It's, it's a very, very diverse uh, industry, let's say, uh, and therefore your professional options are very, very wide. Uh, and so you can, what we do is though, uh, in this brief time, hope to give you the foundation of uh, the whole of the range. So you won't be, you know, you don't, necessarily become uh, experts at any one particular range, such as asset management or developer or so on, though you can focus and do deeper dives on that. But importantly, for a thing like real estate that's going to change so much over the coming years, you should just learn about what everyone does in this ecosystem because it's going to change. And there's no point in choosing a particular niche or role at this point in time because it's probably going to change. So best to come in, learn some of the basics, learn some of the traditions, but also take insight or get insight into what's changing and what's coming next. So you will have a mix of core work and also interdisciplinary or, or elective work. Uh, you will be considering real estate within both the private investment and development 
and also the public sector and how it manages uh, urban development. Uh, you can be entrepreneurial or you can move into more corporate settings, more established uh, uh, work situations upon graduation. We now have a lot of students that come from previous architecture or uh, urban planning backgrounds who've actually been out practicing and now want to add their knowledge of real estate to go out and do their own, create and build and deliver their own uh, development projects. So there are many ways in which you can uh, uh, emerge from the program. Uh, local and global, as I say, you can choose and, but most importantly, we do understand that it is a big, confusing, broad area uh, of industry. And so we are fortunate to have uh, resources to talk about this with you from the various out, very outset. And this is um, provided uh, through the career development activities of Rebecca Polymeter, and she will be speaking to you uh, very soon. Uh, the curriculum, just as an overview, uh, if you want to conceptualize it, definitely is a combination of finance, the physical aspects of the environment, and of course, the delivery. We don't just create a concept uh, and then leave it to others. We are responsible for actually taking it through construction and delivering it and leasing it up and selling it and operating it and managing it through its life cycle and so on. So. All of these aspects, uh, these, these three dimensions, um, we could say, are really synthesized. They, we, although we try and study them uh, as components, we're constantly overlapping and interweaving uh, those concepts. Of course, today, as I say, the digital context or the digital tools that enable us to do this are uh, emerging and you know we, we learn about those students here can do coding learn coding and then they work on apps and specific apps and so on uh, so we're involving that in this uh, synthesis of all of these aspects of real estate uh, the program basically proceeds in in this uh, sequence uh, we have we have a uh, summer semester where you start uh, this is where most of your courses are required and called core courses. Here you are picking up a lot of the fundamentals. You're, even if you have come from a background uh, of uh, certain areas, here you're picking up the fundamentals from the areas you don't have uh, within uh, the real estate uh, industry. So as people develop that, uh, they move into uh, the second semester, which is in the fall, and here you can start choosing electives uh, that are in an area that's particularly of interest to you. Uh, once again, you don't, you don't have to focus, but you can at this stage start to tailor some of your elective choices to a particular area of interest. Then of course, real estate, as I say, it is a synthesis of all of these aspects of real estate. Uh, and in the final semester, we really work through your, uh, your, your capability within that synthesis, right? creating that synthetic outcome of all the pieces that you've learned. Uh, so you hear you will do a project, a capstone project, which is comprehensive deal, uh, a deal book of a development of a proposed development project. And you'll do it right from what the site is, through the market analysis, through the zoning, understanding the zoning, uh, through the physical design, the, st the structural notions and so on, the financial uh, analysis of, of how it will function as an investment, the financial structure of the debt, uh, right through to marketing and disposition and return to investors. So that is the way in which you pull all the, all of the things together in these various other classes, a lot of them use case studies and projects so that now you're actually acting as a real estate person, pulling together these things and making decisions. Uh, we have, of course, lots of uh, lectures. You just heard uh, uh, Michael Kimmelman today. We've had John Gray and so on, and uh, Scott Reckler. In fact, here we actually have our conference, an annual conference that uh, is put on by our program. 
Uh, this uh, is in the Mandarin Oriental. We are also over at the Pierre Hotel in New York, if you know New York well. Uh, and we have in uh, major speakers from the industry and panelists and so on for that conference. It gives you an op opportunity to mix as students with other people from the industry who come and attend that conference uh, and our alumni, of course, uh, do as well. Uh, the, as I say about careers and career development, uh, you, you start thinking about how to present yourself, what your advantages are, which area of real estate you might be interested in getting a job uh, for, and we have our annual spring career fair and Rebecca will speak about that later. Of course, sites. Sites, understanding the actual physical nature of a development process requires, you know, kicking the tires, getting on there, uh, touching it and feeling it and experiencing it. Uh, also study trips. This is, this is our trip over to Asia where we have uh, quite a few of our alumni who are gathered here, uh, as well as uh, some students who we took back there to uh, get them with great jobs such as with Blackstone and so on and so on. So we do do trips over there. Um, we also have, uh, when we can get back from COVID, we have wonderful uh, interactions with mentors. You are assigned a mentor who's an alumnus of the program and uh, we do mentor events and, uh, and, and various activities uh, where you interact and get advice from people who have gone through the program already and are out there uh, putting it to use in their professional advancement. Uh, and of course, you know, real estate, uh, not everyone has these weird eyes, but, you know, we really uh, are a very social group and uh, everything from uh, in the park, uh, you know, game, volleyball games, um, music, uh, social gather, you know, social gatherings and so on, site tours, neighborhood tours and so on, all sorts of interesting things to be part of. And forming this bond with your classmates is invaluable to your experience here. That is one of the great things about being a full-time very intensive program, you actually get to bond with these people who will be your friends and probably business partners. We have huge legacy of businesses that have come out of the program and partnerships and of that over, the, uh, over your future. So our mission is to create a visionary builders of the global urban environment, and that is you, and we hope you will join us um, very soon. Okay, so we'll go back. Um, Jessica and Rebecca, what have we got? I think I'm next. Next, there you go, Rebecca. It's going to be um, Rebecca next. I don't know if you'd like to take any questions about the program in general, not specific to admissions or careers, or if you'd like to save that all for the end. Any, any general questions about what I just mentioned, about the general, the theme, the approach, the, you know, the, the, way in which we see our contribution to the real estate industry in terms of your young professionalism. No? All right, well, let's move on. Rebecca, sure. let's go. You guys see this okay? Can I get a thumbs up from, um, oh, there we go. Thank oh, you, good. thank you. Uh, my name is Rebecca Palomita. I'm the Associate Director of Career Development for the MS Red Program at Columbia. Um, this fe coming February, I'll be here for six years. So I've been working now with a total of like six classes, I think now, Jessica. Um, it goes very fast. The program goes extremely fast. It's only three semesters and you all get to spend time with me, which is fun too. And I absolutely love getting to know you guys, okay? So the purpose of this, we are like, you know, Professor Darrington said, this is not an MBA program um, as far as placement, but I will be there with you, guiding you professionally for your career while you are at GSAP, okay? At the MS Red program. There's a timeline that's involved. So you have three semesters, the summer, the fall, and the spring. Um, and I'll be working with you on that career timeline um, to make sure that you guys will all be close to employment um, come, come time on uh, graduation in, in May. So these are the things that are offered through me in the office. We have the career counseling sessions, which is me. 
We have a career fair every year. We have lunchbox lectures that focus whether it's on industry folks or alumni who are in the industry. We do have a mentorship program, a spring internship program where you will be able to take a internship for credit, which is would be one and a half credits for that last semester starting in January, right from January to May. And then we have a new software that just launched this fall called People Grove, which is basically kind of like a one stop shop job board events discussions flash mentoring being able to collect with re, uh, connect with recent alumni so it's really cool. Um, so you guys will be able to use that which are really happy to have on board. I meet with you on an individual basis right so you guys will make appointments with me I do 30 um, minute office hours which sometimes go longer and the president of the class is on there and he knows that sometimes it's kind of like a waiting room. Um, because I really take the time to get to know you guys and learn about what you want and really um, focus, you know, like Professor Darrington said, on the versatility of the program and what you need and what you're learning and kind of helping you narrow that down after your second semester. Um, and it's important for me to get to know you to be able to portray you to employers and other organizations. These are some of the topics that you guys will learn throughout the year uh, with me. Um, and some of these will be seminar related and then some of these will be one on one with me as well. And then these are just some titles of uh, some examples of titles of some of the student of students when they graduate, whether it's a role in finance, whether it's a role in development. If you see under the examples of roles of development that first one says development analyst slash associate. Those are typically, um, which, you know, if you guys decide to come in the program, I'll get more into the nitty gritty of each of these, but that's more of a hybrid role where you actually touch the finance and the project management piece of the, uh, the built, you know, life cycle. So I just want to let you know, so these are some of the finance and uh, development titles. This just gives you a snapshot. I mean, I have years prior to that. Obviously, the class of 2020 during COVID was probably one of the most difficult classes that I had to help get employed. Um, but you know, it all worked out. It just took a little bit longer. As far as the class of 2021 who graduated in August, as of right now, 85% of those students have roles, which I'm very percent. I'm very, very happy about. 85% of them have roles. 10% of the class right now, I kind of don't know where they are. That's typical. You know, some people, those, you know, students either will go back to the maybe a family business or back to their home countries and just kind of like don't keep in touch. That's usually about 10%. And I'm still only, I'm still working with 5% in the class on getting full-time roles, um, which is actually spectacular. This year, our development roles, um, you know, were around 18%. Uh, and those development roles are focused, you know, not necessarily in New York, but all over, right? So this is, you know, obviously our geographical locations, a majority of our students stay in the New York area, but we have students who have go all over the world. We've had students who've landed in London, who've landed in Hong Kong, but you know, um, Canada, as far as domestically, we've had a lot more go to the Southeast down into Miami, um, the Sun Belt in Texas, uh, LA, Chicago, Boston, uh, Denver. So we have no problem with connections and, and getting employment um, all over the world. That's not been an issue for us. We're very connected to our alumni and industry folks, just like um, Professor Darrington said. Um, I thought I had one more slide there, but I don't. I think stuck. Stop share. Um, I'm just stopping to share now. If you guys have any questions, that's just kind of like a, a literally like just a little snippet. Um, but it's it's a lot of work, you know. Just like you guys will obviously come to Columbia if you want to to work on your real estate degree. Getting a job is also a full time job, so you will be full time students and full time um, seekers of employment for those who do need a job and I will be right there with you, all three of us will. So I don't know if you wanna take questions after Jessica. I think we should do any career questions now. I'm sure people will also have questions at the end, but we wanna talk about um, student, student life here and Joshua Westerman will be doing that. So if anyone has a burning career question, I, I would throw it in now and then we also could do, do some at the end. Nobody has any or, questions. About or we can jobs. wait. We can wait. That's great. <laughs> Joshua's here. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, thanks for passing along. Uh, my name is Josh Westerman. I'm a current uh, MS Red student. Um, I'm happy to be able to serve the, the 22 class uh, uh, as their student council president. And uh, 
as you just heard, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of just build on top of what Professor Darrington and Rebecca have said. And, you know, as a student, I, um, a little bit about my background is that I have a, a degree in architecture, and then I went and worked professionally for about seven years before deciding to come back to, to school to, to kind of explore more about uh, the topics uh, dealing with the built environment that I was interested in, um, building on top of that kind of architecture knowledge, um, both academically and professionally. And, uh, you know, to expand on what both of them have already covered, this, this program, why I was attracted to it and what I'm seeing um, as a, a current student is, is exactly what they mentioned. And it is, it, it's such a diversity and strength of perspectives and experiences. And, you know, I think the best way to, to learn about your interests, but also um, how to apply your talents is, uh, is, is to, learning from other people and being challenged in the way that you think about our built environment. And um, so our, our cohort is um, a, a strong and, and vibrant, uh, diverse uh, group of people that um, have a lot of backgrounds um, from design, from brokerage, finance, and to be able to sit in a group project uh, with my cohorts and and kind of draw on their perspectives and their experiences is, is a, a really unique um, and, and challenging way um, uh, to learn uh, real estate. Um, so I don't have a, a, a pretty fancy slide or anything, but I wanted to just share my screen to talk about some of the things that um, we're doing in the MSR program. And, and Jessica dropped this link in the chat, and I thought it was just important to show, um, as Professor Darrington had pointed out, Real estate and uh, and GSAP, you're going to get so much benefit from the the social aspect um, and just learning from your peers. And so, GSAP and uh, the MS Road program have just a tremendous amount of clubs that you can be a part of and you can plug into. And and uh, so, I think there's really great strength in in the in the in this list. And I would uh, urge all of you just to to kind of poke around this website and this link and just see some of the great ways in which people are thinking um, outside of the classroom. Um, and all of these clubs are doing a lot of really good things. Um, obviously the social aspect, um, but bringing in guest lectures, uh, professionals, doing site tours, uh, even though that is tricky in COVID times, but you know, trying to get small groups to go see buildings. Um, it, it's, it, they're really, really great resources to have outside of that, that classroom. Um, and then I just urge all of you, if you wanna see what we're up to, uh, we are on Instagram and uh, you know we're kind of sharing what some of our clubs are doing and um, some of the fun things that we're up to. Uh, and so we, we try to keep this active. Um, and then if there are any specific questions for me as a, as a current student, I'd be happy to, to take those. Kelton, you have a question? Yeah, I, I, again, thank you for speaking with us. Um, it, it was spoken a little bit about the, uh, I guess the, the very collegiate atmosphere of the class and, and getting to know all your, uh, I guess, peers, whether it's in your own club or silo or, you know, with the program uh, more broadly. Could you speak maybe to your experience or perhaps maybe a, a specific story um, of where you really felt included into that greater Columbia uh, GSAP environment? Sure. You know, I think that happens on the regular. Uh, it, it's kind of funny that uh, a lot of the classes are are designed to kind of challenge you either in a group setting or, um, you know, even if it's just two individuals that are, you, you're challenged to um, either negotiate with someone when it, maybe you're in a leasing class and, and you're having to play a landlord versus a tenant or whatnot. Um, or a larger group project where you're working on uh, maybe a development proposal. You are learning, you know, I, I, I come from an architecture background, and so I had been surrounded by designers and creatives. And when you're put on a team and, and you're having to think alongside someone um, who comes from a finance background, and they, they are maybe approaching it a little different than you, I feel like it's very indicative of the real world. And... Um, 
and having to learn and challenge yourself to think alongside um, a group of people. And so I think the cohort, again, just to, to establish it, it, it's so diverse um, where people come from and, and, and the backgrounds that um, I hope that answered your question about how that's kind of challenged on the daily um, academically. Any other questions? Yes, uh, Kelton, I can just add that, you know, it's um, <clears throat> it, it's it's not sort of structured. It's the, the idea is that the class itself is wonderfully broad, you know, about 150 students uh, that you're with sometimes all together for a lecture. Sometimes you're in different, you've taken different classes or you're in different groups or you're on different projects. So, uh, so within your activities, uh, both academically, but as Joshua said, and he's, he's president of the student council, the student council run many, many events uh, for the whole class, in addition to people, in addition to the clubs that set up various events. Uh, the clubs are also very generous in, you know, they set up events, but they invite everyone. So, uh, you know, it's not as if you're siloed within clubs, you get to know each other and, I really believe that 50% of your learning and understanding about real estate is going to come from your interaction with your classmates, where they're from, what their experiences have been, how they see the world, how they go about uh, solving the same sort of problems as you do, but differently. Uh, the lectures, the guest lectures that come in and the things you do with your clubs, 50% uh, easily of what you learn. So, you know, being accepted and being included and so on is really just part of the whole, uh, you know, we're here to explore together. Absolutely. And it goes back to that cliche, like what you put in is what you're gonna get out type of thing. Like obviously um, being an academic, you can attend every class and, and be involved to that degree, but it really is about seizing the opportunity over this year um, to plug in wherever you see a chance um, and learning from every possible person. And we have Arusa. Yes, this is Arusa, thanks. Um, I was wondering, and you guys might be covering this in a little bit, but if you'd be able to provide an example of um, the kinds of projects or problem statements you're working on um, or exploring in, the, in this program. Ah, oh, well, it's a huge range, but uh, we start with some very small, you know, introductory projects, uh, such as taking a site, uh, investigating its, uh, its neighborhood, the community, the zoning requirements and so on. That's from a physical point of view. Uh, we will also take uh, a problem or a project in terms of working out the financial feasibility mm -hmm. of doing a development on a certain site to things that vary to really large areas. Um, you know, how do we work with community land trusts in an area like the Bronx, uh, things like that. So, um, and then as I say, so there's many, many different types of projects along the way, no sort of specific project description or problem description, uh, but it does all culminate in a very specific deal book that you produce as an individual at the end that proposes a development project, you're given a choice of, you know, six or seven sites with, in the New York area, and you work with groups initially, but then you go and you do your own uh, solution, your own proposal to that full development project, as I say, from how, this, how you work with the site through the physical notion, through the financial aspect, and, uh, and so on. So you take away this a uh, wonderful uh, presentation of everything you've brought together and learned and brought together in your training. That's great to hear. Thank you so much. Um, I have a quick follow up. Um, I was wondering how, like, maybe what percent of the cohort or the, the student body of this program um, pursues this as a dual um, degree with another, you know, whether that's an MBA or, or for example, urban planning masters. Or another program. Uh, Jessica? 
Um, so it depends every year. And it also sure. is a little tricky to count because some people start dual um, when they're applying to both programs at the same time. Some people apply to a dual after their first year of MR. So I see. at any point we have like 25, 30 duals going along. Sometimes someone will start dual and ultimately decide to just switch to real estate. Occasionally it happens vice versa. So, I mean, it's not a huge percentage, but um, there are always people kind of moving along. And it's nice too, because they can kind of network with every class if they're uh, strategic about it. And also work with Rebecca, work with me, um, work on keeping the clubs going. This summer we had a lot of dual um, TAs. So, you know, they've already taken the core classes and it's really nice to loop them in when they want to stay involved. Got it. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Arusa, you, you, you're limited in terms of, you know, what dual degrees you could do. You can't just do an MBA and a real estate dual degree. Uh, there, it's just within the Graduate School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation between um, Master of Architecture, I believe, Master of Urban Planning, maybe Masters of Preservation. Uh, and so on. But, uh, you know, some people do come from the MBA program and, and take a couple of courses as okay. electives, but mm -hmm. there's no no formal arrangement with any other programs across the university. I see. Yeah, I would be interested in, in the Masters of Urban Planning program. So that, that's helpful. Thank you. Okay. I'm looking at some of these questions in terms of entrepreneurial support. Um, it, some of it's a little bit cobbled together. We have this great professor, Professor Cohane, who teaches a couple of classes on entrepreneurship. I know he's met with a lot of students who want to kind of follow the same path, which is what he did after, um, after graduating from the program and kind of had been doing beforehand. There are some students who are already working on entrepreneurial ventures before coming in, and they like to partner with other classmates. Um, we have a class on entrepreneurship with Masood Body, um, Professor Body, which is great. There is a, a, an organization that's kind of umbrella for Columbia University on um, Columbia entrepreneurship, so someone could plug in there. Um, they also have some entrepreneurship talks um, through a center that's kind of affiliated with the business school, but it's open to Columbia students and, and staff. So it's not, it's not like a set, this is the office of entrepreneurship that you would come to at DSAP, but we do get a lot of entrepreneurial students who kind of make a point of getting to know their classmates and also professors working in that space. Yes, I might add that this is learning about entrepreneurship. We are not set up and the university does not allow uh, commercial advice to be given by professors or to be um, obtained during your uh, educational program. Uh, that is not uh, the learning experience here. And there's certainly no funding for entrepreneurial activities uh, you know, within the university. That's just not what the university is about. But in terms of learning and being uh, exposed to many, many people who do it, uh, lots and lots of opportunity for that. And, uh, you know, you'll be inspired to go out and take advantage of everything that's out there. Um, alumni network outside of New York. I'll just say a couple of things. Um, we uh, we have uh, alumni gatherings of people in in many many areas uh, for a, a long for quite a while. Uh, Los Angeles, they, you know, we only had a, a few, a handful, but it's amazing how many people have uh, converged around that area, converging around Texas, converging around Florida. Uh, so many of our graduates and alumni are moving to those areas and, and working there. So those, uh, those alumni groups uh, geographically are, are being expanded. Uh, when you're here, uh, you, you know, there is some re outreach to them, uh, but definitely you know, you're, you're able to call on them and connect with them. Rebecca has a, a new database system, uh, which she might speak about that enable, is going to enable uh, all of these alumni to uh, 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 jump in. Uh, here, Jessica's saying we have a great alum, alumni LinkedIn group. Yep. Yeah, so there's a, there's a LinkedIn group that you guys will have after you graduate. There's also a searchable alumni database um, that you guys have access to that's central wide. And then you will have the GSEP Gateway People Growth Platform where you will be able to um, 
reach out to recent alumni. Basically, the, the GSAP People Grow platform is kind of like a, a LinkedIn for GSAP. So there's numerous ways where you can you can touch upon that. But I also, you know, even with all of you who you know went to undergrad, you might might be surprised at how many of your undergraduate um, friends or you know people might be in the real estate industry as well. So I always tell students to do like the double networking, Columbia and using your undergrad, especially in New York. Anything else? Uh, well, Jessica, back to you. Well, it's nice to meet <laughs> meet some of you and see some more faces that we've already seen um, before. I just want to give a plug for the, the application website. Some people have been asking me questions. What if I have 525 words? Will the system reject it? If you choose to apply, it will not reject it. We aren't super strict about that. Um, all of, the, all of the guidelines are listed at the GSAP admissions page. I would recommend if you choose to apply, not waiting until January 13th to press submit, just because you know there are only so many people who work in the office and then oftentimes a recommender will be traveling during the holidays or someone gets sick, they get distracted. And so if someone just kind of wraps it up more around Thanksgiving time, um, generally they're happy they did that. But again, totally up to you. Happy to answer any questions in the coming weeks. Um, we have the, the built up um, symposium that uh, Dr. Darrington is presenting with so many great um, speakers and it's set up to be virtual. So that'll be a good learning experience. Um, there will be the spring conference. We do have some other talks that are sometimes open. So if you want to go to something else that's um, gonna be virtual as a, like a lunchbox and it is open, happy to let you know. Um, we don't have as many things open as usual. So normally I would try and say, you have to come to campus. You have to talk to many people, as many people as possible. So we aren't doing that quite yet, but hopefully hopefully by the spring semester, um, we do not review them on a rolling basis. They're all looked at together in February. Um, and yeah, I just make sure if you choose to apply that none of your recommenders are related to you um, or in the same fraternity or something like that. Someone who's a little senior to you definitely helps. But if you have any other questions, this is the perfect time. And I'm sorry if I missed anything in the chat for any of us, really. Oh, sorry. Hi, I'm Derek. I was wondering if I could ask a question. Yes. I just wanted to ask, uh, like Josh, I also went to architecture school and I, I just, actually, I just recently graduated like two years ago. So I've been only working in an architecture firm as an architectural designer project manager kind of thing for the past two years or so. I was wondering, would my experience, my lack of experience make me less competitive of a candidate when I'm applying or? Uh, no, absolutely not. Um, I think any experience that you bring um, can, can help you. And, and I think this opportunity to plug back into academia is um, a, a chance to further um, that education, that knowledge base. Um, and so, uh, no, I, do, I don't think that's a deterrent. And, and, and actually, I think having some work experiences is, is really beneficial because you have um, set in an office and, and you've seen from an architecture standpoint um, how things can operate. Um, so no, it's not, a, it's not a deterrent at all. Okay, that's really awesome to hear. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is uh, Hunter Bouchard. I just have a quick question, if it's okay to piggyback on Derek's question. Yeah, so um, just to piggyback on the experience of the experience of question, I come from a totally different background. I was in the military for nine years. I'm an officer in the Navy. Um, and for, since getting out, you know, I've worked in a, you know, a separate field um, that's totally, you know, different um, from, you know, real estate development. Um, however, I've been, you know, fascinated and very interested. I have lots of friends, you know, who work in real estate actually have attended the program. My question more specifically is, you know, with a background like, like mine, you know, will that be a deterrent or, you know, are there other applicants, you know, who come in from similar situations? Um, I'll have Rebecca speak about it uh, in more detail because she herself comes from the Marines, but uh, uh, Hunter, absolutely. Uh, we uh, often have great, great students coming from uh, military backgrounds, having been out there a while, 
uh, and uh, you know the wonderful thing is you know exactly what you want to learn and you you're pretty committed to doing it and you you get so much out of it um, we've had people from all of the various different um, uh, military uh, arms and so on and everyone's done well so be really great to have someone from the Navy uh, Rebecca thank you we just had an army officer this last class in the class of 21 who's now working full time and was able to get an amazing internship. Um, we work, we also work closely, well, I work closely with the, um, the Veterans Center that's on Columbia's campus um, that also helps, um, you know, transitioning, you know, from the military and back into obviously an educational space and kind of like, you know, obviously having those um, skills transfer. So it's not a problem. We actually enjoy it. We've had Navy, Army, Marines, Air Force. So um, we also, you know, participate um, and help with um, aid as far as that goes from the VA. So I, I'll be happy to, to work on that with you if you have any questions on the side. Oh, amazing. Thank you guys so much for that. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. oh, we appreciate your interest, Tanta. Hey, thank you. Can I just jump in and say anything you have in your background, whether it's in the military or if you're volunteer organizations, if you have any leadership um, experience that you want to kind of like draw to the forefront, mention in your statement, mention in your resume, sometimes people think, oh, I don't have any relevant experience. But if they start thinking about it, there are a lot of transferable skills. And it's, it's great to include that in your application. Real Thank estate, you. yes, real estate is not a thing about any singular skill. It's really about a person who's passionately driven and capable of pulling on many technical skills and most critically, interacting with all the other people that you have to work with. So, you know, talk about any of those things uh, that, you know, you've that uh, have been part of your life in that respect and so on. Uh, and, you know, you will not only be the perfect person for us, but you will find the environment perfect for that. Anyone else? Yes, I have a question. Sure, Jacob. I am coming straight from undergrad and I was wondering if that's a disadvantage when looking for jobs during the program and also what percent of the class comes straight from undergrad? Well, I might just address that, I'll have, you know, Rebecca uh, follow up with respect to specifics of jobs. Um, like an MBA program and like any graduate program, really, uh, it, it is preferable to understand a bit of the industry first. Uh, and most definitely, you know, after six years of just being a student with uh, no work experience, um, it, is, it is definitely more challenging to get that first job and now you're asking for more money because you've got a graduate degree than you would have as a, as a more junior person. So, you know, the, uh, we, we do, you know, in, encourage that. But on the other hand, you know, many people are just so driven and ready to do it. Uh, they know, you know, they know what they want to do. They're willing to take internships and summer jobs and so on to fill in the, uh, the work experience. Um, you know, so it, it does work both ways. Um, I would say, who'd like to jump in and tell me what portion? It's been coming down we, in terms of the number of people who come straight through. You know, with many um, MBA programs, there's a, a, an absolute requirement of at least two years work experience. Uh, so we tend to be trending along that, but how many would we have? Probably 20 to 25% come straight from undergraduate. Well, I wouldn't say that much. I, I mean, it's always a handful, but I wouldn't say 25. No, not even that much. Yeah. I, I mean, it's the sort of thing where typically the people who come within a year of undergrad, really excellent grades, really amazing letters of recommendation. Maybe they grew up in real estate families or they were working along the way, or they have so many internships and volunteer things where people are just like, this person's a superstar, they're amazing. In general, I totally agree with Director Darrington. It really helps to have a few years of work experience, but there are totally exceptions. And if you feel like you're that exception, you know, I, I'm not gonna tell you, you can't apply now for sure. Rebecca, what do you find when they- I, I find, them? you know, and we have, we have a couple of kids in this current class and what I tell them is, you know, having an internship during the program is, is a must. Like it's, 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 it's a must coming that spring semester. 
And typically what happens is you either stay at that internship to full time or you leverage that internship to try to get another job as an entry level, um, whether it's an analyst or an assistant project manager and looking for roles that have zero to three years of experience. So there's students who do it, but as far as being competitive with your classmates and the market, you will need to have that transition into real estate while you're in the program. So I will, I worked with the students, like I said, to try to get them in the door coming for an internship from January to May. Uh, anyone else? Oh, sorry, it's Derek again. I have another question. Sure, sure. Hi, I was wondering because I have I did a lot of projects when I was in school and I was also I've been putting together my portfolio. I was wondering, would you guys recommend putting work I've completed or participated in while I'm working professionally, like within a firm or like a development that we I worked on? Or would you recommend that I should just put work I done like academically as alone in school, a part of my portfolio? Um, I tend to like to see, I mean, we don't need to see the work, but definitely I think you should describe it that you've been involved with. Uh, you know, Derek, as I say, real estate, uh, even design, uh, architectural design, urban design, none of these things are done individually, you know, singularly. Uh, they're done with groups and so on. But having been involved in that, that's a very important part of your experience. Uh, you, we don't expect you to have been out there running a project or anything, um, you know, uh, but talking talking about your experience, uh, you know, you're here just to add the extra bits so that you will go out and run projects. But, um, uh, you know, we don't expect that to date, though, but do speak about it. Uh, we're not an architecture or urban planning program where you submit a portfolio. Uh, so, you know, you don't sort of pictorially demonstrate it, but definitely on your, uh, you know, your, your resume, your CV, and so on, you should describe in, you know, in good detail, the various things that were done and, and what your role was. Okay, I see, thank you so much. Good. Hello, good afternoon. I have a question in regards to um, the topics covered in the, the master's programs. Are there approachable to other kinds of countries that are not the first world country that obviously the United States is. And um, could you go on farther about that? That's my question. Uh, Catalina, absolutely. Uh, real estate is a, is a global activity. And although you do learn in this uh, New York context, an American context, uh, because of globalization, the way in which these things are done uh, for instance, zoning. Zoning is now moving to all parts of the world, zoning regulations and planning and so on. So, you know, you learn here uh, about a number of things that will happen in your careers in other countries, uh, or you pick up ideas that you can take back to those countries. Uh, we don't specifically have programs that investigate a lot of other countries because there are so many, uh, we do do uh, annual study trips. Usually, we've gone, we go, we some go to Brazil, um, taken one to uh, Romania. We've gone to uh, London, China, uh, and so on. So we do do study trips, uh, and within that, you learn about cross border things, how things vary between what you've learned in the U.S. and how things may be different in in a different country. So it's not a global program. It's not the Kennedy School of, you know, uh, of sort of global affairs or anything like that. But we do understand, and this, the class is so global. Uh, you know, you, you have people from everywhere. So we really rely on everyone, you know, contributing their, their experiences and what they know. And in fact, once we, uh, you know, we had, which I'm hoping the, the um, uh, what do they call it? The real estate, uh, the you know offshore real estate club, or the global real estate club, are getting uh, to do again is each person from in the club that it made a presentation about their country and what the basic real estate activities and conditions were and how things differed. And so, by being here and having to do that, 
you learn more about your country and then other people learn also about your country. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's sort of a, a really a, an, a way of, you know, being within the environment and, and picking up those things. Hope that helps a bit. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, look, folks, you know, we're all reachable. We, we love your questions because it's a big choice. And, uh, you know, and we, we work very hard here to make it a great program. So we, we don't want you to come half-heartedly. We want you to feel as though you know exactly what you're getting into and you really embrace it. And, you know, you, you, what we're offering is exactly, you know, what you're going to be able to get. So uh, please, you know, interact with us now. Uh, you know, before you go through the process of, of doing your applications and so on, uh, we're really, really keen to talk you through a lot of the details. I really am really just sad that we can't actually have you on campus because it's usually such a great, great feeling. Um, but, you know, uh, the wonderful thing is you'll be, hopefully we've all uh, got rid of the challenges of COVID and if you join us next year, we'll all be here on campus and it'll be a lot of fun. So thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, Jessica, Rebecca. I just want to say thanks so much. It's great to see you all. Stay in touch. We're yeah. around. We're happy to talk. Um, yeah, huge decision, but I've seen so many people go through the program and really change their lives. So Enjoy. it's very inspiring. It's very exciting. So I, I hope that some of you will come for this next cohort starting in June. And I will say we are fully back in person. Some people have been asking and it's, it's gone remarkably well. I mean, so I, I feel like by next June, things will be normal, normal. No masks, I'm hoping, you know. <laughs> no masks, we're yeah. fine. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, bye.